Hello everyone! So far in our previous one and two step videos, the equations we solved were quite straightforward. Where it can get a bit confusing is when we change the position of the unknown and we introduce negative numbers, fractions, or decimals. However, we still go about solving the same way. We perform inverse operations to both sides, one at a time. This is our first equation and we see that the x term has been written second and the takeaway 2 has been placed first. This is actually an equation from the first two-step video and it was written like so. And we addressed the inverse operations that take away 2 first and then the 3 times. Now I would resist the urge to rewrite the equation like this. Students always say, well, I like to see it with the x first, then the other operation, the equal sign, and the number. But what happens is we lose the negative on 2 sometimes when we copy this incorrectly. The 2 is often associated with the plus from the 3x, and the actual sign on 2 is negative. When we recopy them, these kind of mistakes occur. It's best to leave the equation the way it is and perform the inverse operations. One more thing, here the 3 is really stuck to x, so it's going to be the second inverse operation we're going to do. First, we will add 2 to both sides. On the left-hand side, we'll be left with 3x. And on the right-hand side, 10 and 2 is 12. We will then divide by 3 on both sides. On the left hand side 3 divided by 3 will give me 1 with x and 12 divided by 3 is 4. At this point we can take the solution, substitute it into the original equation to check, negative 2 and then 3 times 4. Well that gives us 12. If I owe 2 but I have 12 I get 10 so we've solved it correctly. In this example, we have the answer written first, the x term at the end, and 17 placed before it. Now, I know I said that we weren't going to rewrite them, but I will in this case just to show you where the signs are on each term. And over on the right, we see that the sign on 3 is positive, the sign on x is negative, and the sign on 17 is positive. Remember, the sign of a number is always to the left. So on x, we have negative 4x. 17 is positive. This happens with signed numbers as well. Let's take a look at 2 and negative 5. The sign is always to the left. If we see no sign, then we assume it's positive. And here we have negative 5. When solving, remember this negative 4 is really stuck to x, so it's the inverse operation we're going to do second. So first, we're going to subtract 17 from both sides. On the right-hand side, we're left with negative 4x. And on the left-hand side, if I have 3 but I owe 17, I owe 14. Now we see x is being multiplied by negative 4, so we will divide by negative 4 on both sides. On the right-hand side, we get 1 with x. And on the left-hand side, negative divided by negative will give me positive 14 fourths. We can simplify it. We can divide top and bottom by 2, which would leave us with 7 halves. At this point, we can take our solution, substitute it into the original equation, and check. 17 take away 4 times 7 halves. In the numerator, I get negative 28 over 2. That would give me negative 14. So 17, take away 14, does that give me 3? Yes, it does. So we've solved it correctly. 
In this equation, the first inverse operation would be to add 8 on both sides. On the right-hand side, if I subtract 8 to add 8, that goes. I'm left with x divided by 6. And on the left-hand side, if I owe 20 but I have 8, I still owe 12. Here we have x being divided by 6. The inverse would be to multiply by 6 on both sides. On the right-hand side, if I multiply to divide by the same number, I'm just left with 1x. And on the left-hand side, 6 times negative 12 is negative 72. At this point, we can take our solution, substitute it into the original equation, and check negative 72 divided by 6. Take away 8. Well, negative 72 divided by 6 gives me negative 12. If I owe 12 and I owe 8, I do indeed owe 20. So we've solved it correctly. The inverse operation here would be to add 10 to both sides. On the left-hand side, if I subtract 10 only to add 10, I'm left with 5 halves t. And on the right-hand side, if I owe 30 but I have 10, I owe 20. At this point, t is being multiplied by 5 halves. The inverse of multiplying by 5 halves is to divide by 5 halves. And I'm going to use a parenthesis to avoid confusion, especially on the right-hand side. Remember, on the left-hand side, anything divided by the same anything will give me 1 with t. And on the right-hand side, when I divide by a fraction, I multiply by the reciprocal, or I invert and multiply the second one. So in the numerator, negative 20 times 2 will give me negative 40. And in the denominator, 1 times 5 will give me 5. This will give us negative 8. At this point, we can take our solution, substitute it into the original equation, and check. So I will write over here negative 10 plus 5 halves times negative 8. In the numerator, 5 times negative 8 will give me negative 40. In the denominator, I have 2. This will give me negative 20. On the left-hand side, I had negative 10 all along. So if I owe 10 and I owe 20, I do indeed owe 30, which is what the equation stated, so we've solved it correctly. The inverse operation we're going to perform here is to subtract 5 from both sides. On the right-hand side, if I have 5 only to subtract 5, I'm left with negative 1 8 n. Careful, don't lose the negative. And on the left-hand side, 16 take away 5 will give me 11. Now we can see that n is being multiplied by negative 1 8. The inverse would be to divide by negative 1 8 on both sides. We're going to use parentheses. On the right-hand side, anything divided by the same anything will give me 1 with n. And on the left-hand side, 11 is being divided by negative 1 eighth. So I'm going to multiply it by the reciprocal, which is 8 over negative 1. In the numerator, I will get 88. In the denominator, I will get negative 1. And this will simplify to give me negative 88. At this point, we can take our solution, substitute it into the original equation to check. So we have 5, and we have negative 1 8 times negative 88. In our numerator, we're going to get positive 88. The denominator is 8. This will give us 11, which we add to 5 and we get 16, so we've solved it correctly. The first inverse operation we have to perform here is to add 2 to both sides. On the left-hand side, I'm left with just 0.5x. 
And on the right-hand side, if I owe 20, but I have 2, I owe 18. Now we see x is being multiplied by 0 0.5. The inverse is to divide by 0 0.5 on both sides. On the left-hand side, anything divided by the same anything will give me 1 with x. And on the right-hand side, a negative divided by a positive will give us a negative answer. And we're going to take 18 and divide it by 0 0.5. Remember, we can have a decimal in the 18 part, but we can't have a decimal here. The way to fix this is to move the decimal to the right once and also in 18. What we're doing is we're multiplying by 10. 5 goes into 18 three times and then it goes into 36 times. So our answer is negative 36. At this point, we can take our solution, substitute it into the original equation to check, and we have negative 2 plus 0 0.5 times negative 36. So 0 0.5 times 36 gives me 18, that's negative 18, so I owe 2, and I owe 18, and I get negative 20, which is what the equation stated, so we solved it correctly. Subscribe to my channel to get updates on new videos, and if you'd like me to create more, like and share with someone who might find this helpful. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.